Iduna was the fair goddess of spring. She lived with her husband Bragi in Asgard, in a beautiful garden of fruits and flowers. She tended the flowers, while he wrote verses about them and about the gods and heroes. Every morning Iduna gathered the golden apples of youth for the breakfast of the gods. Every day the gods and goddesses sat in the cool shade of Iduna's garden. If they were sick or tired, eating one of her apples always brought back health and strength. Odin the Allfather, his brother Hunir, and Loki the Mischief Maker were taking a journey round the world. They wanted to see how men were getting on. One evening, when it was too late to go farther, they came to a densely wooded mountain. There was no house in sight, and they were tired and hungry. There was nothing to eat. Down in the valley, Loki had seen a herd of cattle grazing. They went back, caught an ox, killed it, and dressed the meat. Loki kindled a fire and began to cook the supper. When it was time for it to be done, the meat was as raw as when first put over the fire. He made more fire, with the same result. He made another fire, but could not cook the meat. They heard a noise in the branches over their heads. Looking up, they saw a very large eagle. They also saw that the eagle was fanning the flames with his wings to put out their fire. A voice spoke to them. The voice said that if they would give the eagle his supper, their meat would soon be cooked. They at once invited the eagle to eat with them. He flew down and again fanned the flame with his wings. Now the fire grew brighter and supper was soon ready. They sat down together, but the eagle took for his share one leg and both shoulders of the ox. Loki was angry at this, for he was very hungry. He took a pole that was lying near and struck the eagle. One end of the pole stuck fast in the eagle's feathers, and Loki could not let go the other. The eagle flew away over the treetops, drawing Loki through the branches and up the mountain slopes, bruising him against the rough rocks. Then it flew near the ground, dragging him over stumps and stones and through briary thickets. Loki knew then that the storm giant was hidden under the eagle's plumage. He begged for mercy but the eagle flew faster. At last, Thiassi, for that was the storm giant's name, said, I will let you go if you will bring me Iduna and her golden apples. Loki promised, and Thiassi set him free. In sorry plight, Loki, all ragged and torn, came back to his companions. The next day, the three travelers went home to Asgard, the city of the gods. When Loki went to visit Iduna, he found her busy about her household tasks. She was dressed in green and wore a garland of leaves. Her husband, Bragi, was not at home. Iduna had just gathered the apples for the next meal of the gods. Loki said to her, I have found a strange tree just outside the city wall. It bears apples finer than yours. The golden color is deeper and the red a more delicate blush. Yes, said Iduna, those apples are doubtless more beautiful than mine, but not so good to eat. They will not bring back youth and strength. I think you are wrong, said Loki. They are sweeter to the taste, and they restore youth and strength as well as yours. When I found them, I was very weary, and when I had eaten one, I felt as well as ever I did. I will go, said Iduna. Would it be better to take my apples with me? I think so, said Loki, because you can better compare them. She put her apples into a crystal dish and went with Loki outside the wall of Asgard. Thiassi was waiting in his eagle's plumage. Poor Iduna heard the roar of the storm giant in the treetops, but it was too late to go back. The great eagle caught her in his talons and flew away to his wintry home in Thrymheim. The gods missed Iduna, but supposed she had gone on a visit. Of course, Loki said nothing, and the gods did not suspect mischief until gray hairs began to come in their heads. 
Their color was fading, and their faces were becoming wrinkled. Then they remembered that Iduna had been last seen with Loki the mischief maker. They questioned him, but he would not tell the truth. At last, Thor the Thunder God became angry and threatened to strike him unless he told all he knew about Iduna. Then he told how he had let her out of Asgard and how she had been stolen. He promised to bring her back if Frigga would lend him her falcon dress. Frigga lent him her falcon dress, and he flew away to Thrymheim. Thiasi was out on the sea fishing. Iduna was sleeping on a rude couch in a cold, rough hall. There were tears on her cheeks. She looked sad and lonely, but she still held in her arms her crystal dish of apples. Loki, as a falcon, flew in at a window, placed Iduna in a magic nutshell, and flew away with her in his claws. Just then, Thiasi came home. When he found he had lost Iduna, he changed himself into an eagle and flew after her. The falcon flew fast, but the eagle flew faster. Thiasi was gaining on Loki when they came in sight of Asgard. All the gods and goddesses were out looking for Iduna and Loki. When they saw them coming and Thiasi pursuing, they made fires on the city wall. The falcon flew over safely and gave Iduna back to Bragi and the gods. But the fire caught the eagle's wings, and with burning plumage he fell among them. Thor killed him, and threw his eyes up into the heavens, where they still shine as stars. A huge ash tree called Yggdrasil shaded Odin's hall. This tree supported the whole world. It had three great roots, one in Niflheim, the land of cold and darkness, one in Midgard, the home of men, and one in Asgard, the home of the gods. The tree was cared for by three Norns, past, present, and future. Every day they brought fresh clay for its roots, which they moistened with water from the Urdar fountain. They also sprinkled the leaves with this life-giving water. Sometimes the water dripped from the leaves upon the earth and made honey, which the bees gathered. The leaves were always green. On the topmost bough sat an eagle, between his eyes was a falcon. The falcon had very keen sight, and from his lofty perch he could look out over the dwellings of gods and men and the land of darkness. He talked about everything he saw. Four deer fed on the branches. From their horns dropped sweet dew, which supplied water for all the rivers of earth. The branches also furnished pasture for the goat Hydron from whose milk was made mead for the heroes of Valhalla. Down in the darkness of Niflheim, a dragon continually gnawed the root to kill the tree, because he knew that when Yggdrasil withered, the reign of the gods would end. The squirrel, Ratatosk, scampered through the branches and up and down the trunk. He carried tales from the dragon to the eagle, and from the eagle to the dragon. He liked to keep up continual strife. The council chamber of the gods was at the root of the tree, near Urdar Fountain. It was their hall of justice. They went to it every day, riding over the Rainbow Bridge Bifrost. Thor alone went round another way, for he feared that his iron chariot might injure the bridge. High up in the branches of this wonderful tree, Iduna built a pretty summer house. One day, while sitting at the door of the house, she fell asleep. Down she tumbled through the branches, past the deer and the goat, startling nimble Ratatosk. Down she fell into cold, dark Niflheim. White and still she lay at the root of the tree. From his high seat, Odin saw her, and sent Bragi and Heimdall to bring her back. Odin gave them a white wolf skin to protect her from the cold. They found her, still alive, but so hurt by the fall that she could neither speak nor move. They wrapped her in the soft white robe, but they could not bring her back until the following spring. Heimdall returned to Odin with the sad news, but Bragi stayed with his wife all the long winter. His harp was silent, and he could not sing, and there were no bird songs, 
until Iduna was able to throw off the snowy wolfskin robe and come back with her husband to tend the flowers again. Thank you so much for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Wednesday.